The following is a presentation of iRacing on PTR-TV. We'd like to thank all of our channel partners for their support. Please like and subscribe to the channel, and we hope you enjoy today's broadcast. Hard to believe that we are already 75% complete with Season 6 of the American Muscle Series campaign. But this championship is on its very near deciding point, and race number 10 is on the docket tonight. We shall drink tea with our pinkies high while nibbling on Yorkshire pudding, because we are in England here tonight at the Brands Hatch Circuit. Just about two and a half miles around nine turns and a fair bit of elevation change, well more than you're going to see anywhere else in England should be interesting test for these Ford Mustangs. Welcome everybody to PTR TV for tonight's coverage of AMS again season number six race number 10 is on the docket here today of our 12 race campaign. Going to be myself Corey Silva in the booth and in the production truck along with Andre Groundbush here to help out with the call so and Andre we just started these guys not that long ago hard to believe the season's already coming to a close we got three to go. Uh, and of course, trying to see what's going to happen with that championship fight. Yeah, it's going to be interesting with the season winding down and the point situation just getting tighter every week, especially for the amateur points getting closer and closer. Uh, it's going to be wild. Brands Hatch, it's a track that these drivers should all be very familiar with. It's a very popular track uh, among a lot of official series. So uh, I think that uh, these drivers know what to expect, and that's going to make it even tighter competition. 2.42 miles around this track here in the UK with nine total turns. So uh, you're the corner name expert uh, Corey I'm not too familiar with a lot of these I know there's a section of the track called Dingle Bell which is absolutely my favorite part of the track uh, but that's about all I know <laughs> yeah Dingle Bell um, but we are right, looking right now um, at the one of the harder parts of this circuit here turn number one you basically will come down the front straightaway in the Paddock Hill Bend and then you just fall down a hill there and uh, we'll have to almost blindly find the car there to evade uh, the kitty litter. Coming up a little mini hill here into Druids. Druids, again, going to butcher it royally. Uh, but it's a little bit of a, uh, a hairpin here. But uh, I'll tell you, I saw a couple streams in the rain. And I'll tell you, right at the bottom of that hill turns into quite the bit of a hydroplaning, or I guess aquaplaning. Um, if I should get the verbiage right in terms of the country here. But uh, we were just talking about the point standing, so we can go over those in visual manner here. Um, leading our pro standings after nine races. Eero Nam up by 12 points, which sounds like, you know, a modest amount. But we have to remember 50, well, 45, 50 cars a race. And it just takes one issue to throw you out and uh, hurt your issues there. But Fabian's wire in second. And then you just have to look here. 269 for Sanchez, and then you have Henriquez and Malone separated by three. You got uh, Kevin Parrish in sixth, all the way down to Matt Solarsic in tenth, um, only separated by about 20 points, and we know how close uh, those drivers run on a weekly basis. And then we have our amateur points there, Andre. Yeah, Chuck Lomano is still leading the way. He's got about 30 points over Matt Thompson. Um, Matt Thompson had a pretty good run going last week up until the very end with the chaos. One point back from Thompson is going to be Charles Hosea, so he's moving up the grid. Mike Thompson in the fourth. You got Dave Blair, Mark Royce, Levi Powell, Jeff Andrus, Greg Hartman, and Aaron That Face Bray. Yeah, I was a little bit behind on the sound effects there, so uh, I was waiting for it. <laughs> yeah, I was updating the uh, the titles on our ticker there, but uh, we do have a couple guys missing here today. I know Taco Phil, Mr. Keck, is not going to be present in today's race, and remember they do have two drop weeks here within the series, so um, some guys have already 
you know, found their races that will be necessitous for those drop weeks. You know, Eero Nam uh, missing a race earlier in the season and a couple guys who have already had their issues. So when it comes to this point in the season, uh, it becomes very stressful as to, uh, you know, I got those drop weeks, but I already had some bad races. I don't want to have another one um, that'll throw me down there on the averages. Yeah, uh, and I know that in the case of uh, Phil Keck there, he said that he's out not only this week, but next week. So there's both drop weeks right there. If he's got a bad race after that, or if he's had some really poor races early in the season, uh, well, uh, those are not going to be his drop weeks anymore. So uh, definitely putting himself in a bit of a precarious situation, but for a good cause. I know he's traveling to uh, get a better view of the upcoming total eclipse, and I know a lot of people in the league have been looking forward to that and talking about it quite a bit. I think a lot of people in general I've been looking forward to that, so uh, hopefully he gets a good show, and hopefully it's worth the points. Yeah, I get, uh, I know up here in uh, Massachusetts, where I live, I'm in about a 90% totality zone, and I already bought my glasses, and uh, make sure if you, a little uh, advisory tip here for anybody, if you do buy some solar glasses, you know, to see the sun and look up straight at it, make sure they're credible, because the last thing you want to do is buy some rinky-dink solar shades and then just go permanently blind. So just do your research on that. Uh, just a little pro tip there. But uh, qualifying underway, everybody's currently on their outlap. So uh, we will see what happens here as we uh, scroll through. Uh, we have a new nickname. This is Dehano2, Dan Ott. And we have to remember, I can't remember who it was. He body slammed somebody off turn number two last week. So now he is dirty Dehan O'Toot here. So he's just, we're just adding the nicknames like pancakes on a stack here. Yeah, that was uh, quite the incident. It was kind of perfect last week too. We cut to his car and then immediately uh, he sent somebody to the shadow realm. Not, you know, not on purpose by any means. He just got a little tight in the corner. Uh, but it was quite interesting. Qualifying continuing underway. Nobody has posted a time yet. They've just pulled out of the pits, following along with David Fernandez now in the 0-9. I think David just now got uh, a new driver photo. I don't think he had one last week. Dustin Aulis, he's had a photo for a while. Uh, uh, now, uh, speaking of which, somebody who did get one, the Lumberjack. So the Lumberjack did indeed update his photo. So... Uh, again, big shout out to the drivers for uh, going in and filling out the sheet. I know, uh, it, man, we've been in leagues where you can't seem to get anybody to do it. And yet, these guys have been uh, great, absolutely great. Uh, in the meantime, Iro Nam, he is on his way to hopefully try to get a good qualifying position. You mentioned, Corey, that points gap, 12 points to the car behind. Again, sounds like a lot. But we've seen instances where Euros made mistakes. You know, if you speed on in the pits, if you get a little bit loose and make some contact with somebody, those 12 points can go by in the blink of an eye because, yeah, we have 50 cars in this field and they don't tend to separate a whole lot. I mean, if you spin out, you might be looking at 10, 15, or even 20 cars driving off into the sunset before you can even get back to the blacktop. Yeah, exactly that. We see it on a weekly basis here and times are coming in and they will start flying a 36.94 for Hoopchak. Kevin Parrish, 37 flat. You know, you expect lap number two to be faster. Euro Nam, he sneaks in there at a 36.5, so uh, showing some speed there. And uh, you do expect laps two and three and uh, subsequently to all be faster as they get some heat in the tires there. And, uh, but you just have to look at the other side of this, Andre. A minute 36 around. This is going to be probably one of the, the most amount of laps that will run all season. These are relatively short laps, you know, comparative to what we've been running. You know, we've seen places two minutes and 30 seconds around. This is a pretty quick track. Uh, it's only two and, a, two and a half miles approximately and uh, a lot of quick flowing corners. Yeah, there is a lot of flow to this layout. Uh, it's one of the things that makes this track so fun. It's not really jarring or abrupt anywhere. It's just everything leads into the next just about perfectly. And I think we've only had one other track this year uh, with lap times that were even close to this fast. So you're right. It's going to be a lot of laps for these guys to complete tonight. Following along with Matt Malone now uh, in that 83 machine. See if he can't improve on his time I, at all. I did him a solid. For anybody who follows Matt Malone on social media, you saw his April Fool's joke. Screenshots are flowing all over the internet, and that is a kind of a That's pun statement uh, there. 
And I was going to say, that's some verbiage to choose. Uh, yes, and I, I did spare him there. As, uh, I could have updated his driver photo, but I will spare him the professionalism and not kill him a sponsor deal. Um, but he's going to come along the front straightaway here. And I'll have to be careful with that. We're at 36 flat. That's a pretty good time. Oh, no, it's not 36 flat. It updated. It's a 36 8. That puts him in seventh. It uh, glitched in his favor and then glitched to his detriment there. Uh, let's go down. Let's take a look. Oh, look at... Look at my man here. Well, your man, I should say. Not meaning that in connotation, but fifth for Charles <laughs> Hosea. Yeah, I was going to say ring the bell. Um, uh, it's another proud moment for all the Charles Hosea truthers at the moment. I mean, Sitting so it is a bell. Top 10 is 136.52. Luke Sedenga behind 136.52 as well. Uh, so it's going to be close. Uh, I know that Chuck Lobano had a pretty decent lap as well, but Adam Freeze is going to be the second amateur all the way back in 15th. So quite a gap Charles has over the next uh, competing amateur. So we'll see. Can't improve that time anymore. There's the face. We've been waiting for it. Aaron Bray. <laughs> <laughs> down, uh, I think that was through Druids. I, I'm not, again, I'm not very familiar with this track, but into this very yeah. quick right-hander. I mean, they're breaking so hard. That corner is an enigma to me, Corey, because they break so hard, and yet they round that corner with so much yeah, speed. This track has got to be a lot of fun to drive. This part of the track is very, the most free-flowing, and it's the most elevation change up beside the first corner. You're, uh, you know, basically, you know, right here, you're going down a little bit of a crest. This comes into the last corner here, which is uh, Clark Curve, and that puts you back onto the pit straight here. Um, so it's a very, very fun layout coming into the pits there, and it looked like he had a good lap going, but uh, he probably had a 1x penalty of sorts. But yeah, this track, very fun. I think I actually won a skippy race here at one point or another. Really do enjoy this track. It's a track that's in, basically, I can't think of a simulator that this this track is not in. I mean, it's going to be in your Gran Turismo's, your Forza's, your, uh, your ACC's, uh, basically everything. And this track has actually seen NASCAR Euro Series. I remember Bobby Labonte, uh, I think he took a NASCAR Euro Series car here. So this is a uh, very popular track. Uh, here comes Jack Sanchez here. He's currently third, and he will remain third. That lap will not better him, but very, very nearly. Yeah, he did improve. It just wasn't quite enough of an improvement. He needed to get to a 35-8-1. Just got down to a 35-9-0. And I'll tell you, Jack was wheeling that thing I saw through the last corner. He actually gave it a little bit of counter steering. That's how hard he's whipping it through these turns. We'll see if he can't get this final lap in. There's Chuck Lomano in the number 113 machine. Yeah, not a good run for him being the points leader. No, and you know, when qualifying first started, he he got one of the best outlaps out of anybody. He had a top 10 outlap, but then once everybody got their second and third laps in, he just started plummeting down the order. So I don't know if he's had issues on his subsequent laps or what's going on there, but you can see he's just getting a little bit uh, unsettled through the, the corner. And uh, again, you got to be mindful of off tracks here. You can see there's not a whole lot of runoff anymore. This is a more old style circuit with the gravel traps and the grass right off of the circuit. So you're going to get those one X's and that'll invalidate your lap time. And speaking of invalidate, he's going to come down pit road. I think he's had enough. He knew he wasn't going to be able to make it another lap. It would have been close if he had stayed out. He might've made another one, but it would have been up. Levi right Powell on the, the most colorful machine here on the circuit. He's going to pull into the pits here. Scott Brooks, uh, well, he got he he stopped he stopped he stopped uh so we got nobody no we got a couple live we got uh this is luis henriquez here he's coming off of the final corner and well evidently everybody must have got one x's on their last lap because absolutely everybody pulling it in here but well you do have to remember as well uh within the service you do get the cooldown lap but uh in this league um we do know that it is the cooldown lap uh, at the end of the time, or usually get another the minute to finish up. Uh, we immediately kind of finish that off here. But here comes Brandon Brush, which uh, of note for him, uh, he is getting a penalty from last week. If you remember the final corner at uh, Mossport, uh, he was deemed at fault here. And then we had somebody who go went full sauce backwards, and that was kind of fun. Uh, but one thing to bring up here before the grid starts. The American Muscle Series is also racing to raise awareness for the American Society for Suicide Prevention. AFSP saves lives and brings hope to those affected by suicide. They're a voluntary health organization that gives those affected by suicide a nationwide community uh, to empowered by research, education, and advocacy to take 
action to get this leading cause of death. Together, we can stop suicide. AFSP.org. Uh, but that is the end of our timer here. So I want to thank everyone for tuning in to PTR TV. If it's the first time, don't make it your last. Hit that like and subscribe subscribe button uh, we are on our mission to 1300 subscribers and we just need your help to get us there but that is the countdown so Andre how about you go lead us off here with our starting lineup here today at the Brands Hatch Circuit and Ironam was able to hold on to the pole. Nobody took it from him, so he ran a 135.739. That's good enough for P1. Fabian Zwire, very, very close. 135.808, going to be P2. Jack Sanchez wheels it to third with Luke Sedenga in fourth. P5 is going to find Evan Hubchock. That's one of the best qualifying efforts out of that number seven so far this year. Mr. McGrew going to be P6 along his outside. Luis Henriquez with a late qualifying push up to P7. He's got Neil Kemp in eighth alongside. Running up the top 10 is going to be David Moore in that 13 and Matt Malone in P10. All right, 11th place will find the lumberjack himself, Kevin Parrish, with Andre's best friend. We got Charles Sosia. Just he fell out of the top 10 there, but very close in the 12th spot. The Beaver Mobile. He's not 10th. He's 13th. He's got a little bit of work to do. And then Reese Gardner. He had a good run. But hopefully the dial up is DSL here tonight. Brandon Brush, he's going to have his drive through penalty, but he's going to start in 15th with Kevin Buckholes in 16th, Jay Bast in 17th, and then David Finch in 18th, 19th, and 20th finds two, um, um, Amer I'm thinking about baseball, two American League drivers, two uh, amateur drivers, Matt Thompson and Adam Fries. Outside of the top 20, Ed Sanchinelli is going to be P21, Jeff Andrus 22nd. 23rd is Aaron Vatface Bray, Jay Little to his outside. P25, Matthew Gazenda, and he's got Mike Thompson to his outside. P27, Chuck Lamano, amateur points leader, has a little bit of work to do to work his way up through the grid. He's got Dirty Dan Ott in 28th, right on his uh, passenger side door. Dustin All is going to be P29, and Levi Powell is going to run out 30. 31st finds Stefan Price, and then David. Fernandes from New York, which talking about baseball, I don't like New York because I'm a Boston native. Uh, Scott Brooks in 33rd. Freddie Weaver, he's not last. He is in 34th. Tom Went is in 35th with Dave Blair in 36th. Greg Hartman out of Colorado in 37th. And then Myrtle Beach's Mark Royce in 38th. Rounding out our top 40, Brandon Smith and Antoine Sidersky. Craig Brockway is going to be P41, and Jonathan Golden is going to be 42nd. Looking back to 43rd and 44th, it's going to be Mike Nickham, John Casey, respectively. And running out the rest of the field, shotgun on the pack, it's going to be Merle Eshman, P45. So pretty solid field here tonight. And, uh, man, these cars, as many of them as there is, in tight proximity and dealing with all the elevation change early in the lap, that is going to be something to see. We do have our weather information on the screen. These drivers probably thankful that we're not dealing with a 112-degree track like we have a few times this year. 67 in the air, 86 on the pavement. It is 311 in sim, so we can expect it to get a little bit cooler potentially throughout the day. 83% humidity, and uh, actually a little bit windy out there, Corey. 14 miles an hour. That doesn't sound like much, but that can get you on the straightaway. Well, I will tell you, the 83% humidity, it's a lot less than 97, which we've been seeing lately. The fog uh, will quickly go to this top-down cam. Uh, it's not foggy here, which every race I've covered in the last two weeks, really, has been foggy, so uh, that is an appreciative fact here. We're still waiting on Fabian's wire to grid up here, and he's going to have... Well, now, there he, there he goes. So that is no longer a concern, but we just got the one-minute warning. Well, at this point, probably closer to 30 seconds here. So 40 minutes of action. Of course, remember the pit stop here at play. Euro Nam trying to pad his points lead. Fabian Zwire in second. Zach Sanchez in third. They are trying to eat into that and might need a little bit of lady luck on their side to make that happen here. But I want to thank everyone for tuning in. Let's have a fun night of action. Some AMS muscle car Ford Mustangs here from the Brands Hatch Circuit. There it is. The queue. Anytime now, we're going to get ourselves rolling. Barney's going to have the flag. He's going to get it in his hand. He's going to wave it. There we go. Here we let's go racing here in England. A little bit of wheel spin out of these drivers as they are scrambling three and four wide down the uh, not so straight straight away into the first corner here. We're going to sort it out for second, third, fourth, fifth. Everybody battling. Is anybody going to get out into the sand? Almost. Looks like some drivers might have found themselves getting forced a little bit tight, but uh, nobody completely getting out of the group. Oh, the Tahano Toot! It is going to be a bottleneck here, Corey. we got drivers at a standstill. 
at the top of the hill. Yeah, I saw Dan Ott basically come to a dead stop there out of the 30th position, but as we scroll through to the back of the field, I uh, don't see any uh, any carnage, any no hoopla at play here. Well, so that is, that is a damaged race car right there, Corey. I, I noticed right uh, at the tail end of that incident, uh, that driver right there. Oh, yeah, Br that is uh, contact. Brandon Smith. He has made some front-end contact here, but uh, nothing of over significance here. He will muster his way on. We'll bring up the live timing. It's going to the left side of the display here. And I'll tell you, Jack Sanchez came out to party here today. I think that's actually his driver fact, if I'm not mistaken. That was... Uh, nope, it is not the him and his lemonades there, but coming through the back end of the circuit here st into Sterling's, the 90-degree left-hander. Got to get to that curb all the way out, hop the curb on the right side of the racetrack, and then now you'll get yourself set up for Clark Curve to conclude a very quick lap here at the Brands Hatch circuit. Hero Nam trying to take advantage of it. This is a track, Andre, that, I mean, I know you don't know too much about it, but just looking at it from a very high level, it's not going to be an overly slipstreamy track. Uh, so that would be something you'd think Hero Nam may benefit from, as if he needs anything else to benefit from. <laughs> right, like he needs anything else in his corner, but uh, you're exactly right. Just looking at the, the way that this track is laid out and the way these guys are racing it, I don't think there's a whole lot of areas on this track where the slipstream is going to matter. This is just going to be a momentum track, uh, almost in the vein of, of Watkins Glen. How much speed can you carry through the corners uh, onto the few straightaways that you have? And what kind of uh, you know, smooth corner can you get? That's what's going to be important. Again, some of these corners, they're so sharp, but yet you can carry so much speed through them. And that is what is important. And they are eating these curves up, Corey, every single corner. There's some tracks where they don't really use the curves this much, but it seems like every opportunity they get, they are up on those curves, trying to use every inch of the track. And now maybe a move on Chuck Romano here. The uh, 113 under fire as we go on board can't quite tell who we're on board uh, with but oh it's uh, that face aaron bray so he's the one challenging uh, the amateur points yeah, leader banana aaron on a bun i can rock with that um i mean it's a poor can, man's snack okay. there it's a poor man's banana split i suppose put it in the freezer it's kind of a poor man's reese's there so you know May add that to my list of things that I'll say I'll try, but probably won't here. Now, what? this is Kevin Buckholes here, and I saw something about chicken on his car. So now uh, we will have to scour his livery here and try to find out what it says about chicken. Little chicken racing. So I don't know what that means about his teammates, but, you know, he's doing a good job in that 13th spot. He's just here for the SR, and let's take it <laughs> easy in the turn one. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, that is... I think the phrase most certain as the 41 takes his drive through penalty. Uh, I think that's the phrase most certain to give any iRacer PTSD because anytime anybody says that, they're not there for safe reading. They will be the caution, guaranteed. Yep, exactly that. They will be the first one on voice comms with an attitude. They will be the first one, um, you know, or uh, let's have a nice clean race, guys. I think that's right up there in that same category. Aaron Fried. Oh, yeah, that's Matt Thompson. That little real estate there on the exit of that corner. You can use all of that kind of astroturfy stuff, <laughs> uh, for lack there of better terminology. That's right there in Graham Hill. We'll take a look at that uh, next time around here. Here comes Luke Sedenga. He's getting passed by Matt Malone. Remember Matt Malone? last week at Mossport, and just as I say that, I'll interject because Sedenga is going to get his way on by there. Tight Ooh. quarters racing, oh. nearly in the kitty litter is Sedenga, but Matt Malone, he is right there with, uh, that's Kevin Parrish to his arrears here. Malone, he is in the middle of a sandwich. Yeah, he really is, and I'll tell you what, Sedenga played that perfectly. He got back on the track uh, right before the grass got into, like, the deeper uh, sort of weeds there. And, I mean, he just, he timed it beautiful and got himself a position from it. Put uh, put our buddy Matt Malone in a bit of a disadvantage, uncomfortable position. And Kevin Parrish, who was up there fighting for it, he lost a little bit here. He's going to have to get down to the inside. That's uh, uh, David, David Moore. David Moore. Yep. And then Beaver. He's got, uh, he's be behind him. He, got, he needs one spot to do his job. He's in 11th, so that ain't going to be good enough. Beaver Mobile, you got to get yourself a 10th. And here he, he knows. He knows, and he's going for it here, getting a little <laughs> bit of contact nearly to more. And um, as I was talking about, this is down in uh, Graham Hill here, uh, down to the bottom of the hill. We'll go on board with somebody here if we can. 
You can see all that little astroturf there on the exit of that corner. It's kind of hard to see. I don't have a good camera for it, but that astroturf is in play, which if you may ask why that is in play when the majority of Coda is not in play, well, that would be a question for the racing uh, uh, track developers don't quite understand it. This track is quite lenient, though, as it is a little bit of an older circuit on the surface. But Beaver, um, he is trying to get by David Moore here. He's got himself into the 10th spot, so now he's done his job. He just has to stay there, and um, it will be a successful race for that number 10 car. We're going back through the field. you got Scott Banks in the 149 car. He's battling with Brandon Brush. He's still in 32nd even after that drive-through penalty. Yeah, obviously that cost him some time and some positions, but he's got quite a few drivers in his windshield that he could potentially get up there and uh, try to overtake if he wants to stab him some points. He obviously had the opportunity to take the penalty right at the beginning of the race, which gives you basically all night to try to mitigate the damage, do a little bit of damage control, and that is what he's going to be doing. And obviously it's kind of a balancing act. You don't want to take too many risks. Because at this point, if you make any oh. mistake, oh boy, speaking of mistakes, how about some lawn mowing? I think that's little David little Fernandez, I there. believe that is. Oh, oh no, there's a, there's a little bit more to that story. So it looks like that oh, race of course, uh, we're through a forest here, but that doesn't oh. help. Yeah. Uh, that was yeah, one of the Thompsons. Yeah. I'm just looking from the back of the uh, camera shot. That may have been Mike Thompson, I believe that was. Let's get one more shot of that, because there's nothing overly prolific going on on circuit right now. Um, I think he was just insistent that he go and have a beach day. You know? Go see the sand, build yeah. some sand. Yeah. I'll, even, yeah. I'll take you out there, you know. There was not a blank space, baby, but he wrote his name there. His, uh, we have, who is that on circuit right now? That is uh, the other Thompson, or uh, it might be still be the same one. I can't quite tell where I am on track right now. I've lost, I've, I've lost it, folks, but uh, battle here coming off of Graham Hill. But going to the front of the field here, and Aero Nam is just out of the slipstream range, I would say. Usually it's right around 7 tenths, but there's not enough. So just as I say that, I boast about him. He makes a goof, and there goes the lead change. We'll go check that out from replay. If I can find a camera through the forest here, that'll still show us what's going on here. I think our chopper cam will do serve. Uh, yeah, left sure. sides in the grass, power slide, yeah. and, and Jack Sanchez had to make an invasive maneuver there. That was good driving to avoid Eero there, but man, that was uh, not a very characteristic mistake for Eero to make. We don't see him do that kind of thing very often. Yeah, not at all. Now he's in the middle of a sandwich. You have Fabian's wire there, and he's, you know, he needs to gain whatever time he can because he is about 10, 12 points back in the overall standings with, uh, only two races left to go. I believe Luna, Laguna Seca and Bathurst. That's just completely off the top of my head, but I'm pretty sure those are our last two tracks on our schedule here. They use all of that AstroTurf on corner exit. So Laguna Seca is going to be a very tough track. Super narrow, super short, really no passing opportunities at all. Um, and then Bathurst is just, you know, that just brings, that just separates all the men from the boys here, and that'll be a good season finale. Yeah, that'll be quite a uh, season finale for sure. It's not an easy track. Uh, I can't hardly make a lap around it, so uh, cream will rise to the top there for sure, but just kind of looking through the field here, battles happening everywhere. I believe that is going to be uh, not Luke Sedanga. That's another 104, car. Jeff Andrus here. This is about in the mid-20s. Dustin All is here. Um, I think he's made a little bit of headway. I vaguely remember him starting around 30. Yep, he's uh, up eight spots on the day, so uh, nine as it updates, but uh, good run for him here, getting into the top 20 here. Reese Gardner, uh, yeah, he still hasn't solved his uh, issues with uh, light speed and internet connections here. He's still having a little bit of links. But remember last week at Mossport, he was about a top five car. So when, it, when the circuit comes to play that uh, Reese Gardner has, he certainly can be one to mess with, but uh, not to mess with, rather. But currently here, just kind of back in his average zone of back end of the top 10. Yeah, he's having a pretty solid day. Um, maybe not quite as great as last week, but either way, anytime you're in the top 10, you're having a good night. And uh, so far, his internet has been a little spotty, but it seems to be stable for the moment. He hasn't really blinked out uh, in the time that we've been following along, at least since that initial little blink. So we'll keep an eye on it, see what uh, the connection does. There goes Kevin Parrish down through the uh, elevation change into the left-hander, everybody behind him. And again, these guys just... Playing such risky games after seeing what happened to Iro Nam, 
dipping his left sides into the grass and the way that it got him completely out of shape. Seeing these guys do that at almost every corner on purpose is making me a little bit nervous uh, compared to what it had, how it felt before. Yeah, very much so. You, you, you gotta, but this is what the series is. This series is so close that you have to be on constant order. That's why the pit stops are so tight. That's why everyone is going to within the, you know, the absolute tenth of a second on fuel because you need to find whatever edge you can possibly get um, in this series. Uh, if you want to be a top runner here, Matt Maloney was at about fifth. Now he's back to eighth here. Enriquez uh, Hoopchock here. He's still holding on to fifth, which is pretty good. But Andre, we got some. We got a decision to make here. This is a very important decision. Are you ready for this decision that we have to make? Oh man, I'm not good with decisions. What do we got to decide? So we only have 44 cars here today, and Royce is out. Mike Thompson is out, and Hartman is all but out. So are we keeping 42th award? Or are we revolving it to our 27th back, uh, kind of uh, backup plan spot? Um, I, I think we should go to 27th. I think that, uh, I, I don't think we're going to get an interview with a guy who's been uh, out of the race since lap two. So we'll bump it up to 27th. Keep an eye on that position. Just give some love to uh, whoever's back there. Currently, Matthew Gazenda. Uh, his last lap was a 137.4. So. Uh, running actually his best laps of the race right now so finding something and maybe uh, able to improve he's following Dan Ott at the moment and uh, what did I just see okay so the, the straightaway I saw those cars on the straightaway going the other way I thought there was an incident going on back there but again I'm not familiar with this layout so getting caught a little bit off guard Jack Sanchez still holding on to the lead Iro Nam closing back in he was almost three quarters of a second back from Sanchez. Now he's back to the bumper, and he's brought some friends to play. Fabian Zwire, Randall McGrew, uh, right there. So we've got a four-way battle for the lead, and then a bit of a uh, breakaway to Evan Hubchock, 3.8 seconds back, who's also, uh, I think, up a little bit from where he qualified. Uh, or maybe he's right where he qualified. I think he was P5. So, again, great night for that number seven, but this battle right here, uh, they are not going to pull any punches, Corey. We're still a ways off from the pit sequence. It seemed to be, at the start of the season, Everybody was kind of aiming for that 20-minute mark, you know, splitting the race in half. Now it just seems like they're trying to go as far as they physically can. Uh, and last week, we saw pit stops as late as the 13-minute mark. So we're a ways off. These guys know that, and they want this track position, so they're going to fight for it. Yeah, they certainly will fight for that spot here coming down the hill here into turn number two um, into Druids here. Druids. Druids. I'm going to go with Druids, but again, my... Uh my English is not that great here. Not quite good with that British accent, you say, mate. Um, probably a little bit of Australian mixed in, but I think they're more or less the same thing. But uh, Let's see. we got Luis Henriquez battling with, that Ooh. is Evan Hoopchock here. Are we three wide? Are we almost four wide here at Brands Hatch? Yes, we are. And they are not oh, going to be contact there. Sedenga into Henriquez. Sedenga out into the gravel. They're going to go three wide. He just lost uh, quite a bit of time off that incident, going back four positions, and now he is going to have to try and get back up there and join this fight. The benefactor, though, uh, definitely Matt Malone got up to Henry for all that. Now he's got a chance. There's, uh, I believe, Kevin Parrish is on board. He's part of this battle. And, man, oh, man, the elevation change on board is just so much more drastic. Gives you a good idea what these drivers are dealing with the way that it impacts visibility as well. But this is a great little battle here for position. And I'll tell you what, looking at the scoring and timing, uh, yeah, Sedenga has gotten back to these drivers. So a little bit of a hiccup, but he is back in the fray. This is the American Muscle Series at its best. We see these battles every week all throughout the field, whether it's for the lead or all the way back to uh, 40 tooth. Uh, these guys give it their all in this five car train, man. Down the straightaway, who's gonna be the first to give? Who's gonna outbreak? I think Henriquez might be holding these boys up just a little bit here, Corey. I mean, we know he's fast, but these drivers look hungry. Got Reese Gardner in the pits here. I'm not sure if that is a scheduled stop or if something happens here. No, Parrish goes a little bit wide there. I don't know if he went wide or if Sedenga made him go wide here, but now he's going to go down the hill into Graham's Hill here, and I think that's going to work out better because he's going to have the proper track line there, and that will put uh, Parrish into that eighth spot. Sedenga will stay at night, McBeaver is about two seconds back in the 10th spot. Uh, just kind of going back to Matt Malone, because I got uh, 
interrupted by something there at some point or another. Remember, he had that issue very, very early last week at Mossport. I think he was out by like lap two or three. Um, so, he, And he's one of the drivers. He can't really afford many mistakes because he has had, you know, probably one or two self-induced mistakes. Of course, Interlagos uh, takes the cake there. But after last week and, uh, you know, a couple 15th place finishes, you know, mid-teens earlier in the season, uh, Matt Malone, he's kind of ran out of mulligans here uh, when it comes to his drop weeks. Yeah, I would have to agree. I, I don't think he's got a whole lot left in reserve. He's got to get good, consistent finishes in these last three races of the year. Right now, he's in a decent point situation, P6, and he's looking at fifth place, Luis Enriquez. And while you were talking, Enriquez actually made a little bit of a bobble, and I noticed a little bit of hesitation out of Malone to capitalize that he kind of slowed up and, and allowed Enriquez to gather his car up. And I got to wonder uh, at what point in the race, what minute mark do those courtesies start to go away? At what point do you see somebody make a bobble and don't, you know, give them a gentle nudge and say, all right, you, you know, get, get yourself together. You're fine. Uh, pit sequence is now uh, a little bit heavier. We have two more cars coming down pit road. That is uh, going to kick Bast this off a little bit than it's back Buckle, So, you yeah, know, right around uh, just earlier than halfway here. And, this may be a circuit there, Andre. And with the short lap times here, uh, only about a minute and a half. If we go all the way back to 40th now, actually, we got to go to John Casey. He's already about a minute off the pace here. So we very well, towards the end of this race, we could have lapping happen here. So lapping with pit strategy here. So maybe pitting early, going to the back before things completely str string out. You can run probably some time trial laps if you pit now and uh, you know when that when everybody starts to cycle out that could you know maybe work in your benefit yeah it definitely could uh, there's a lot to gain or lose here on this pit sequence uh, that is for certain and if you can just get out into that clean traffic like you said maybe come in a little bit early when nobody else is pitting uh, get yourself out into a clean track where there's nobody holding you up no pack to have to contend with maybe you cycle out a little bit further ahead and that could be the mindset between pitting early uh, but at the same time tire wear has not been much of a factor this year so that's why a lot of these drivers are staying out as long as they are and then last week again they stayed out until the 13 minute mark and a lot of them probably didn't even take tires at all so um, it really is just about where you cycle out in terms of traffic more so than uh, the tires or anything else like that. Uh, I know that the weight of the fuel of the car can impact handling as well, so uh, that could be another thing to keep in mind. But right now, Sanchez doing a great job holding on. We're going to go on board with David Fernandez in the 09 machine. Uh, he is currently 36 seconds back in that car, and we do have more stickers down pit road. We look back from the uh, Levi road. Powell in the. What do we call that scheme? It needs a name as. as just. Uh, that, that color, it needs a name. That scheme needs a name. So if you got a name for that color, that car, just put it in chat. It's not camo, but it's something. So uh, words not coming to um, my I'm brain. I'm gonna here. go with Percival. Percival? That car. That car is now Percival. Okay, there you go. I was looking for more of like a color, but you know, a name is also fine too. Uh, get more pit stops here to to play. I think maybe uh, maybe Freddie Weaver that came into the pits here. So a uh, lot of. Uh, and I I think Freddie Weaver sub bumper. Uh, I don't know what happened to the bumper there, but uh, definitely got some damage. Oh, that, that's kitty litter. That is that oh. is sand. That is sand. All right, so that was a Guns a drift, though. He's going to get it back down onto the track. I don't know how he saved that thing, man. I mean, in all respect, I mean, usually we say because he's that dagnum good, but. Make your own and make your own completion to that sentence. Well, <laughs> he's probably still better than I am. Let's put it that way. But up front, you got Jack Sanchez here, up by four tenths of a second Ooh. over Iro Nam, and again full man, yeet oh, over the hill here. And speaking of traffic, the, we have some here in Dreeds now, and they're going to go wide. I think somebody went ultra wide in the sand, if I wasn't mistaken there. And maybe a little bit of contact there exiting the hill. If I can get a camera out of the trees, that'd be fabulous here. Nom's going to have to go around the outside, but he will get in line at the uh, ideal point there, get back in line. And uh, they're overcoming that slower car here. Try can't make out who that is. I want to say it is John Casey. Yes, it is. So John Casey trying to let these guys get around. And, you know, we don't really talk about lap traffic all that often here uh, in the American Motor Series, or American Muscle Series, I should say, uh, mainly because you just don't see it at road courses all that often. But like you said, short lap times here 
Uh, and this track being as narrow as it is with the, all the gravel and all the grass, Lappers don't have a very enviable job here, Corey. It's not easy to let these guys go and do it in a way that doesn't sacrifice your own pace. We saw him lose all that momentum trying to let those leaders go, which is honorable. But man, for him, that's got to be frustrating, and you can definitely sympathize with that. Dan Ott in a bit of a side-by-side -side battle for P18. And he oh, is oh, that was with Adam Freese there. Didn't mean the camera change there, but that's Adam Freese that he was battling with. That is in the 19th spot. Um, but yeah, it, we, this is a very, very close proximity field here. We got David Moore, who is trying his hardest to ruin the Beaver Mobile's perfect race, which for Nick Beaver, a perfect race is to finish 10th. Again, Nick Beaver, everything. He just does everything and he's always in 10th. As we have a bunch of guys in the pits here. Well, we have a, we have Malone, we have Parrish, we have, uh, that is, uh, Hoopchuck there baby. and... Henriquez. No, nope, Fabian's still on track. So yeah, Henriquez, Hoopchock, and then these drivers have stayed out. Jack Sanchez, Iro Nam, Fabian Swire, Randall McGrew, and then was Luke sitting at eight seconds back from the leader. And we saw him have that off-track excursion, made a bit of a comeback. Nick Beaver, P6 after that uh, pitting sequence. So they have yet to come down pit road. Also, uh, Corey, I am noticing that Chuck Romano is gaining on Charles Jose, and now it is still quite a sizable gap, about uh, 11 seconds, uh, between 11 and 12 seconds, depending on where they're out on the track. And so it's going to be tough for Romano to get to Jose. I, I'm not really going to worry if I am Jose, but oh my goodness. That was on lap. That is why Mike Thompson is out of the race. That was on lap five. I just found the triggers for that in the back end. So, uh, that's. That was some, that was uh, Jimmy Johnson at Watkins Glen in uh, in the ninety two yeah, car. Yeah, when he saved, uh, we've seen a lot of Tokyo drifts in this race, and everybody was managed managed to save him. But he had the one car that, when he turned right or left, I guess it bit and it bit hard and um, straight into a humongous tire wall here. But let's see if the leaders pit. They do. Well, the leader Sanchez pit singular. Yeah, the others are going to stay out, so it's just Sanchez. And as he comes down pit road, I want to go back to what I was saying, though. Chuck Lomano, every position he gains is kind of stopping the bleeding, as Charles Jose has been gaining in the points week in and week out. Uh, if he can get up to 10th or even 9th and just be one or two positions behind Charles Jose, then that's not a very big gain for Jose, despite what a good run he has. So Chuck is doing exactly what he needs to do. We talked about how his qualifying effort kind of put him in a situation where he had to go to work and... He has done just that, so uh, we will see as Hosea comes down pit road. You can see the timing and scoring updating there. It's going to put Lobano up a little bit further. These three drivers continuing. I think they're going to give way. If not this lap, it'll definitely be the next. Again, we're 16 minutes in. Jack Sanchez back on the track after his stop. He had a 13.3, which is pretty average compared to what we see well, week in and week see. out. Uh, okay. It's usually between 12.9 and 13.7, but... Matt Malone with a really fast stop, 12-5. That is 11-5 out of Henriquez. What on well, earth? And you know Iro Nam, if anybody is going to have the uh, the lowest, it's most likely going to be Iro Nam here. But if we're looking on circuit right now, you have Henriquez. He is being scored 33 seconds off the lead. Jack Sanchez is being scored 26 seconds off lead, and that's where we expect things to shuffle out to um, at the end of the pit stop. So that would mean, you know, Malone and company five, six, seven seconds off the pace, which is more than I would have thought. But Fabian Zwyer, he hasn't shown this all race. He's been third, fourth, but he is right to the back bumper. Eero is going to pull off into the pits. And now Fabian Zwyer, he's going to get himself a lap led here on the evening with Randall McGrew, who's been a solid top five car, but albeit in quiet manner. Um, he's going to be in second, so it's going to be very interesting to see how this works out. Very interested to see how much fuel Eero Nam chooses to put into that bus Ford Mustang. Yeah, so he's currently at seven seconds. There's eight, nine. Jack Stan goes down. Uh, Twelve, oh, seven. That's a so, lot for him. Uh, that is quite a bit. Again, 11.5 out of Luis Henriquez. I think that is, and again, my memory is terrible. I don't remember what I had for breakfast, so you take this with a grain of salt. But I don't recall ever seen an 11.5 pit stop All right. this, uh, out of anybody. This so. is important right here. This is important here. Where did the Beaver Mobile? Ah, he lost one. He's got to go to work now, but actually we still have a couple pit stops. Chuck Lovano, so he may even out here. So we may have to interview Nick Beaver and uh, just create a 10th place award because, I don't know, it just sounds like it may be fun to do, but uh, Randall McGrew, Fabian 
Zwire here. They are out on circuit. The only other ones yet to pit would be Chuck Labano and then Dave Blair, who is currently in the 17th spot. Jay Bast uh, getting into the grass there with uh, David Fench uh, just in front of him. He's having a little off-track off excitement there, but uh, we just have to wait for this final pit stop. 14 minutes to go. We're 16 laps on the boards here with an estimated 25 uh, is the estimate that we will run here at current pace. Yeah, that is quite a few laps. Is Fabian's wire going to come down into pit road? I didn't really notice all the elevation change coming into pit road from the other camera angle, but that did a great job showing it. The suspension really putting in work there on these Mustangs. And Mr. McGrew had a really good entry there, too. He gained on his wire. So we'll see what they have in terms of lap times. There's Jack Sanchez in the 23. He is two, well, actually three seconds back from Eero Nam. So again, Eero had about a second faster pit stop. Uh, yeah, I am shocked been... how that worked out. Let's pull up. So 28-4 with 12-7 on the pit in the pit lane. Yeah, so he was still six tenths faster in the stall and about, you know, roughly two seconds faster in and out through the box time. So, you know, you, you can't, this is one series that you just, you can't afford those mistakes. Now, Jack Sanchez goes from uh, leading this race down to, it will be third. No, Fabian's wire. He blended out up front and look at this one. Can he make it? Is, like, if, can he make that? That is... That is nuts. So that is a full second less fuel than anybody else in this race. That is quite absurd. Uh, 10-3. So we'll see if he's, he's good on fuel. Um, I, that kind of concerns me. We've seen a lot of drivers run out of fuel. Never forget the mass underfueling of Belle Isle. Um, but whatever calculations he's running, he said, I'm going to take the absolute bare minimum. Uh, that is, uh, you might have to do some lifting and coasting here, Corey. I, I don't have a whole lot of faith yeah. in that. I, and that's the thing is you have to also account for, you know, as you said, with that mass race that everybody ran out of fuel, it was at Belle Isle. And the reason that race was so problematic was the pace was so quick that they ran an extra lap that was beyond expectations. And, you know, it's too early for us to forecast that right now, but... Uh, again, we're on pace for 25 laps. If for some mysterious reason that turns into 26, uh, I think everybody else probably is okay. But that number three, he's going to be very, very problematic here. And I think this lap traffic is uh, in front of him. That's going to help bring everybody back together. So Zach, I call him Zach. I haven't done that in a while. Uh, he's closed back in. So now it's a four-car race. And Matt Malone... I mean, I guess if things get a little bit spicy, he has a chance, but he is just outside of the pack. But, oh, I think they're trying to get by the lapper here. And we're three abreast with the lap car. That's not the lap car. That is the leader, Fabian Zwire. He made a mistake. So that opens up the door. Iro Nam is going to be on the bottom. He's going to take the lead. Is Randall McGrew going to follow him through? I don't know. I don't think they're done with this battle. Look at that. Coming back from the high lane, Fabian Zwire is going to hold on to it. I don't know what mistake led him to lose that momentum, but they did. They lunged three wide, and somehow he was able to come out of that back on top. That was an absolute brawl. Now they're going to go two wide for second place. Randall McGrew then concedes for third. There's Jack. And here comes Jack Sanchez. It is a revolving door. Everybody just fighting for the positions up here. Behind him, you got uh, a lap car. Yeah, that was uh, uh, course, Scott Brooks. That was the one that. Back. Yeah, Scott Brooks was the one that kind of turned the uh, the spice up to to max. There, he was just trying to get out of the way. But something with lap cars is people will see the uh, the lap car and the lap car is doing what he can do to get out of the way. But everybody will see it as an opportunity and they'll try to pounce on it, use it as a pick. And uh, it could be very risky, but it could also be very helpful as it almost was for Hero there. Yeah, he almost got back to the lead. He got alongside. I thought it was going to be a done deal, but then somehow a burst of momentum out of that three car brought him back to the front. And again, those cars squatting down so much. The suspension on these Mustangs is probably under more duress here uh, than it has been in any weeks prior for second place. Jack Sanchez just about got to the quarter panel of Hero Nam. And again, he's been one of the fastest cars of the night. Not afraid to put that car in some uncomfortable places so we'll see what he does but now a little bit further back we're looking at a separate battle there's charles josea p13 at the moment 
and it would seem that Chuck Lomano lost a little bit through that pitting sequence. He was only yeah. two positions back when it all started. Now he is all the way back in 17. Yeah. And uh, the time estimate there for that class battle is there about of uh, 19, about 14 seconds on track. Uh, would be the difference there between those two drivers. So, as you said, for Labano, it's a matter of uh, trying to just negate the bleeding here as it was not a good start for him, but um, just trying to make sure that he can keep that point. He does have it, but you want to make sure that you keep it as high as it can be here as we're trying to get by Freddie Weaver here, and everybody will succeed here going through the back end of the circuit, getting ready to head through Clark Curve as they head through Sterling's Bend there, coming down the hill. Leading ourselves on to the pit straight here. We have one, two, three, four cars under our blanket. And what do you know, Matt Malone, I said he was going to need a little bit of help. He is just, he's so close. He's not there, but I think he is one more slow up, one more battle from tagging along with these guys. Yeah, and he's got a decent amount of time. We're about eight minutes, eight and a half minutes remaining. And if these drivers keep checking themselves up, then he will be uh, in the catbird seat to benefit from that and i think they're going to continue to battle oh. anytime you got jack sanchez fighting for position uh he, he, they're going to battle he gets to the inside of euro nam for a second but i don't think he's going to get there because now with the switch back he is in the unpreferred lane oh but a double crossover he is back to the quarter panel once again not very often you see euro nam look like he might be holding somebody oh, up oh. that may be the case uh, jack sanchez oh, had to take no. a very shallow entry into the grass goes Euro Nam, but he's able to keep it going. He, luckily, he did not lose much momentum there. And Randall McGrew following Jack Sanchez, saying, all right, you opened the door, now hold it for me. And I think around the outside, Jack Sanchez might get clear. He does. Now, so he's now clear into P2. Randall managed to get by Euro as well. So he goes from second to fourth. And you know who's loving all of that? Look at his chops here. Fabian's wire. He got a 1.4 second lead out of that exchange. And this is good for him, A, because now he has the buffer, and B, if he does need to back it down 5%, he has a little bit of space to do so if he's tight on the fuel load. But we do have two more slower cars uh, just to the front of us here. Matt Malone still about a second and a half behind me, so he still needs a little bit of help, and I believe that's John Casey and Greg Brockway. They will be the next thrown into this uh, lead car shuffle. Yeah, they'll be thrown into it here uh, before too long, and I'm sure they're not looking forward to that. Again, this track is not very conducive to the lap traffic. It puts them in a very difficult situation as the camera is doing some interesting things there. I think the, the drone pilot might have just uh, made a bit of a bobble. Now back for second place. Look at this. Mr. McGrew puts the quarter panel to Sanchez. Oh, contact and there entering uh, wow. Hawthorne Hill, or Graham Hill, excuse me. A little bit of a crossover oh. move there from Randall here. Let's see, we'll go on board from Eero, who has the best view of this here on the left-hander. There's gonna be more contact. That's the third time they're not gonna be oh. done yet. More contact with him. Oh my goodness. Cue the Olivia Newton-John. Yeah, they, they were definitely getting physical there. Three, four, even five impacts and, and not separating at all. The group has to set up. The milkman's here. Matt Malone, he's in the picture. He's like, I just need a couple more. I just need a little bit more. I'm right here. He can smell it. He can sniff it. Uh, it's as far as I'll go after what the picture was online here. But yeah, he is just about to find himself in this battle. And then you have uh, Fabian Zwire, whose lead is starting to deteriorate just a little bit. But. You can see five minutes left on the timer and an estimated, uh, if I switch that over appropriately, estimated five coming to four laps to go. Hey man, you're making me sweat there, changing that graphic back and forth. I know when we tried to do that a couple weeks ago, we absolutely broke everything <laughs> on the broadcast. But that so, was the league's well, fault that, that time. This time, it's, this time we're all set. <laughs> I did double check the back end there, as I think that's Brockway or Casey, one of the two of them. Uh, being lapped and he will do the best he can to get out of the way. Matt Malone may have to go around the outside here in turn number two. No, he will be just fine. And now Matt Malone, he's close enough to Euro. He's in the battle here. So second through fourth is right on top of each other here. That's Brockway getting out of the way of uh, our leader, Fabian Zwire. Remember, he won the fuel race at Belle Isle and he is going to try to hang on for about four more laps and do it here at Brands Hatch. Yeah, that lead is fading though it was 1.4 seconds now it's going to be one second exactly and jack sanchez trying to reel him in now if mr mcgrew gets back up there and starts fighting again 
Uh, and that might help Fabian's wire pull out to uh, another gap, but uh, right now everything's single file, so we'll see what happens there. A little bit further back, there is some battling on the track, and look at this, Eero Nam is gonna be challenged by Matt Malone. You mentioned he caught this pack. Well, here he is trying to take P4. Yeah, I think he was going for a crossover type move. I saw him to the driver's side for a right-hand corner, which, you know, if he can get Nam into a position where he would play defensive line, then that can be advantageous here. But now we're coming up through the top of the hill here, I think through Sterling's, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, corner name that you probably look, would find fascinating there, Andre. Back of the corner there. Uh, I think that was uh, Evan Hoopchak, who may have been in a battle there a little bit further back. They may have saw at the back of the shot. But Matt Malone here through the trees. Maybe a little bit of contact to the back bumper of Vero Nam. And you can see, look at the gap this is creating between Nam and the top of the pack here. So this is definitely going to help Zwire out with every pass that Hero has uh, made upon him here. That's points going in the bucket here for Fabian Zwire. He has points for Fabian, and uh, as these two can in a battle, they're going to watch these lead trio pull away into the sunset uh, because Jack Sanchez has caught Fabian's wire. It was a second. Now he's on the bumper, and he's caught. Oh, and grew into it. Yeah, I, for four. yeah, I cut, figures cool. I cut the camera there at the worst possible time, so we will uh, look at that once more. Uh, Eero, I think they may have met in the middle there. Maybe Nam got pinched a little bit, but ended up uh, working out for Matt Malone. He's going to get fourth. Eero Nam goes back to fifth here. But here is the battle for the lead. Jack Sanchez is going to be driver's side here. Coming down into the left, the right-hander here. He's on the outside and in another right-hand corner. And I think it's going to work out for him here. Let's see if he can clear. He will clear Randall McGrew in a very close third here. I think maybe Fabian running out of pace. Maybe he had to save a little bit of fuel. Not quite sure, but all of a sudden the pace is gone in that number uh, three machine. Yeah, and that uh, part of the track is exactly where Jack Sanchez had also overtaken Hiro Nam not too long ago. So it seems like that part of the track, he's just found something that nobody else has. He's able to sling it around the outside and carry that momentum forward. That's exactly what he's doing now. Second place, going to go to Mr. Magoo. He's also going to get around his wire. But like you said, Corey, he's got to be in fuel saving mode. You don't just lose seconds off the pace. Uh, for any inexplicable reason. There's got to be a reason for that. And I think uh, with how short his pit stop was, he probably was just on the knife's edge of fuel mileage as he is now 2.4 seconds back. He is under fire from Matt Malone, who may get up to the podium. He's going to be side by side with him through the tree. And with the preferred lines, wire's going to hold him off this time. Oh, somebody but out on the grass there. They just on the grass. That might be golden. That's Jeff. Uh, no, that's, that's somebody, but he's just trying to get out of the way of the leaders uh, in respectful manner here. But again, Matt Malone trying to get on the podium here. Again, I, if you had mentioned earlier in the race to me, I wouldn't have thought there was a Scooby's chance. Uh, we'd be talking to Matt Malone in post-race here, but it may very well be plausible. But didn't he say the other race, Andre, his goal? He wants to talk to us. So... He wants that third. He wants his post-race interview. Yeah, and he might get it here. Again, I, I think Zwire is in a bit of a fuel save mode. He's just got to find the opportunity to get around him here, get firmly alongside, don't let him defend. Uh, Eero Nam, a little bit further back, that is somebody that you got to worry about. Anytime he's in your mirror, uh, you know he's pretty quick. So uh, that is an interesting dynamic playing out back there. Less than a minute to go. So it will be the white flag when they cross the strike oh. this time. Don't know what happened there, but uh, there goes Matt Malone by Fabian. Now, Fabian, he must be in fuel save mode now. He is dropping like a rock here and not like a Chevy because uh, we are obviously in forwards. But he must have under fueled there. And um, he must have made a mistake. But at the very least, I think he definitely under fueled here. But coming down for the white flag, Barney has it in hand. Randall McGrew. Wants his first win of the season. He can see it. He can smell it. He can taste it. But unfortunately, I think the the chicken on a stick is just too far ahead there on the treadmill. Yeah, and I don't think he's going to make up a second in a lap. It's not impossible. Jack Sanchez could make a mistake. We've seen the leader make mistakes so far tonight. Fabian Zwire now again has some trouble in his mirror by the name of Evan Hoopchock and Kevin Parrish. These two drivers likely going to work their way around uh, just a shame because Wire was so fast all night long prior to the pitting sequence there and then just didn't take enough fuel and, and has to 
go into conservation mode, just hemorrhaging positions. Uh, luckily, he's only got to hold on for about a half a lap more. Jack Sanchez maintaining that one second gap. No pressure, no worries from behind. And Matt Malone also not in too bad of a position. He's got about three quarters of a second over Eero Nam. So a little bit spread out up front, which we don't generally see in the American Muscle Series. Um, but it has been a lot of battling to get to this point where they can finally breathe just a little bit. Jack Sanchez down the hill. And you can tell Randall is wheeling that thing. He's doing everything he can. He's driving hard, but it's just not going to be enough, I don't think. Down past pit road entry through the final corner. It is going to be another notch in the belt for Jack Sanchez with another win here in the American Muscle Series. And we got Randall McGrew with the season best in second. And Matt Malone claws and fights his way onto the podium here. Um, and does a great job here at Brands Hatch. Good recovery from last week's race here. Eero Nam fell back to fourth. Parrish back to fifth. And Fabian Zwire leading this thing with about four minutes left in the race. Has to settle for a seventh here on the evening. But the race is not over here. Let's talk about our amateur situation here. Charles Hosea, he is uh, in the 12th spot. And I think maybe getting some more here. David Moore here on the uh, back end of the circuit here. But I think they may already be in their cool down lap. Yes, they are. They already completed. So a 12th here. And Matt Thompson with a 14th. Someone is putting on a smoke show there, but uh, Chuck Labano will finish in 17th, so he'll be five spots down of Hosea, which will slightly tighten that race there in the amateur division. i tell you what, I think if next week goes anything like this week, it's going to be one interesting finale for the amateur points championship because it's going to be really close. It'll be close after tonight, uh, and next week has just a more opportunity to tighten it even further like you said the rest of the field working their way across the start finish line and i believe that is everybody so we are going to have our complete post-race results once they get that sorted out and we'll figure out where your favorite driver finished jack sanchez again another win here on the year randall mcgrew season best p2 matt malone does get that podium he was shooting for in third Eero nam is going to be p4 kevin parish fifth evan hoopchock with a really good run tonight there in p6 fabian zwire such a good car but just a little bit of under fueling brings him back to p7 luke sedenga works his way up to eighth Great night for that 45. Nick Beaver, he outdoes expectations. He's not 10th, he's 9th, and the driver that was 10th was David Moore. Hard to call that a failure, but I'm sorry, I'm calling it a failure. Your job is to finish 10th, Nick. Do better. Uh, you got Kevin Buckholz in 11th. Charles Hosea, Andre's boy there. He finishes in 12th and leads that amateur division with David Fench in 13th, Jay Bass in 14th, Matt Thompson in 15th, the uh, best of the Thompsons here on the evening. Henriquez, I don't know what happened to him, but he fell back to 16th. We got Lobano in 17th, that face Bray in 18th, Dahan O'Toot in 19th, and then Dustin Alice will round out our top 20. And 30 through 40 is going to look like, or 20 through 30 is going to be Adam Fries, Matthew Gazenda, Reese Gartner, Levi Powell, Dave Blair, Jay Little, Stefan Price, Neil Kemp, David Fernandez, Brandon Brush. Looked like he was going to make up some time after that penalty, but winds up two and a half minutes back. All right, and we'll let the last of them scroll down here, and uh, I can see uh, some notables here on the screen. You have uh, our 20, actually, we don't have our. 42nd position here on the evening, but uh, last page of results here, Golden Thompson, I guess if you want to give him the 42th, you can, or the 27th race would go to uh, Stefan Price if you want to give him that award, Hartman and Royce, but let's go down and uh, speak to our race winner here, that being Mr. Jack Sanchez in the number 23 car, if I can go ahead and uh, grab him here in the waiting room, all right, Mr. Sanchez, Corey in the booth, you got a copy, my friend. Roger, Roger. All right. Well, my name is Corey, not Roger. Yeah, stupid jokes there. But either way, you get yourself a win here on the evening, and you had to muscle through Eero Nam. And I'll tell you, the pit sequences were very interesting, and you had to fight and claw, catch Fabian, pass him, and then hang on through uh, McGrew and company there. Uh, just talk about that last sequence. It was uh, it was quite the battle. Yeah, I actually um, overshot my pit stall by a smidge and had to throw it in reverse. So that very much uh, upset my e exit and sync up so yeah then um you know lucky me my strategy is currently to not lift not feel safe and um i, I think i noticed a bit of that going on again so i was able to 
you know, use that a little bit advantage there to help power through and, and take opportunities where they were. Arrow was making uncharacteristic mistakes tonight. It was interesting. Yeah, he got a little muscled out of the way there, went from second to fifth, and uh, Fabian very uh, much underfueled, only about a 10 second box time. Now coming into this race with the drop week standings, yeah, I think you were roughly 12-ish points off. Uh, we head to Laguna Seca and Bathurst, two immensely difficult and narrow tracks. Uh, being Eero, being Eero, and those two circuits ahead, where do you put yourself in having a chance to get that championship? It's what I want. It's going to be tough. Um, it was kind of funny. You know, I, I enjoy most sport, but it's a tough track. But it disagreed with me last week quite heavily. Um, I'm not the biggest fan of Brad's, uh, Brands Hatch here, but I, I guess I did pretty well. So I do like the next two tracks So um, pretty well. So we'll kind of see how it goes. I'm going to keep practicing hard and keep pushing hard and try to take it. All right, man. We'll see what you can do here. A great run here at uh, Brands Hatch, and uh, we'll follow you next week, man. Congrats. Thanks. Take care. All right, and now I will leave you, Mr. Randall McGrew, our second place on the season, I believe his best of the season. Mr. McGrew, you got a copy? Yeah, man, I'm here. All right, Randall, that was one of your best races of the season. I don't know if you got second to prior, uh, but we kind of in the booth assume this is your best finish of the year. And man, you were wheeling it all night. I mean, you had the pace to lead this thing. I think the opportunity just never quite presented itself. But either way, uh, some of the fastest lap times on the track, a really good points day for that 67. What is it? What is it about Brands Hatch, man? You were dialed in tonight. I don't know. These tight English tracks always seem to suit me. Uh, I think I'm better able to take care of the tires than most people. Uh, I can arc the corners a little bit more than some drivers. We had a preseason race here and I beat Fabian in the end because of, of tire wear. And uh, it, it played out exactly almost nearly identically this, this time. So yeah, I just got to take it easy on the tires. Yeah, doing a little bit of cons uh, conservation is never a bad thing. And I know that uh, the tire wear, if you're not taking care of it, had to be somewhat extravagant. I know we were watching Jack Sanchez in a four-wheel slide uh, almost every lap through turn two, and that's going to heat these tires up quite a bit. That's going to burn them up, so uh, the fact that you're able to take care of them, definitely a big advantage there. And I just want to ask you, I mean, how intense is this track when you're in traffic? We were watching, and we were just amazed at the track limits that you guys were abusing up on the AstroTurf, up on the curb, using every inch you possibly could use, and the cars just did not look like they were in control. It was like around the edge the whole time yeah you really got to hang it out around some of these corners you have to abuse those track limits to be fast there's a couple places where if you're not on the curb you're losing a tenth of a second easy and i was watching the guys behind me disappear because they weren't doing it but it's right there on the edge you're bouncing you're you're you know half throttle trying to get to the throttle as you're going over some of the curves makes it a little bit easier but yeah you come off there i mean we even seen Eero make a mistake there at the top of the hill which is rare yeah, we pointed that out on the broadcast. You don't see uh, Mr. Nam make a whole lot of mistakes like that, but uh, when you are just on the ragged edge like this track forces you to be, it's going to happen. So uh, it was a mistake that you were able to avoid all night long. We really didn't see you make any bobbles. So, again, a great points night. Closing in a little bit more. You're looking pretty good in the overall season points picture. How's the outlook going into the final two races? There are two tracks I really like, so uh, hopefully good. All right. Well, hopefully we're talking to you again here in the booth. Thanks for your time and good luck next week. Thanks, guys. Now we have our amateur division here, our amateur race well, class w winner, of course, being Charles Hosea. So, Charles, the 12th place here on the uh, on the evening. Get yourself the win in class. And uh, our your competitor there, Chuck Labano, our points leader within the class, he is back there in 17th. So you'll chop a couple off of there and had a nice solid run. Started 12th, finished 12th. So I guess you could say you did absolutely nothing here tonight, but obviously not the case. Yeah. How was that for you? Oh, it was awesome. I'm thrilled with the finish uh, off the start. I don't know if you guys saw it. Somebody flubbed the start and uh, almost got in the back of him. Malone got a really good clean pass by him in the beginning, and I was hoping to sneak by and kind of creep my way up into that top 10 because I know I need a bunch of points to uh, catch Chuck. So this is this is good, but uh, 
we need him to uh, fall a little bit further back. Sorry, Chuck. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he. the thing with him is he hasn't been qualifying great, but he, he really is doing championship things by stopping the bleeding here and, you know, making sure that he makes a bad day a decent day, and that doesn't help your cause out. But we had to two very, very difficult tracks coming up. So uh, with Laguna Seca being narrow and short, really no passing opportunities, and then Bathurst just separating the men from the boys. Uh, knowing the task at hand and the tracks at hand, uh, where do you fall on that confidence meter? I'm thinking it's a survival game. We haven't had a huge, uh, there hasn't been a race in a while where we've had like, you know, quarter of the field taken out. I'm thinking Bathurst or Laguna Seca, the corkscrew could be that moment. So just uh, car placement, qualify well again. So uh, just keep doing that, I think. Yeah, well, what you're saying is I need to get a good corkscrew camera for next week then, I guess, so uh, yes. to watch the uh, to watch the carnage. But, you know, you're, I think you're about 15-some-odd points back somewhere in that ballpark, and uh, we'll see if you can keep itching a claw and uh, see what you can do next week, I Ben. I sure hope so. I right, appreciate it, guys. Thanks a lot. See ya. All right, and now Andre will talk to Matt Thompson, uh, the only Thompson to survive tonight's race there, second in class. Howdy. And he is. How you doing, Matt? You, uh, again, had a really good run. Uh, you're stacking the good runs up. Uh, of course, last week, you unfortunately had to finish in reverse, but this week, <laughs> you were going the right direction. Yeah, I was going the right direction, but I, uh, actually, I was, still go I was still losing Charles. He was pulling away from me there at the end. I think I had some drop-off, burned up the tires a little early. Didn't have much fire at the end. Tire wear seems to be something that a lot of drivers are talking about, and it's funny because uh, I think it's just because Corey and I mentioned that the tire wear hasn't been that bad this year, so this track has to go and prove us wrong, of course. Um, but with just how fast you guys are slinging it through the corner, I think you're just putting the, the heat cycle through these tires and you're just making them angry at you. Um, what was your kind of approach to this track? What kind of lines were you running, and, and were you trying to negate the tire wear at all? I mean, what were you doing? Uh... I've done a lot of laps on this track before I racing uh, the old Grand GT5, Gran Turismo 5 and 6, and in the Mustangs. I, I love running this track in that. And so I pretty much go through this track sideways. Uh, not great for tire wear. <laughs> yeah, that's, you know, if you're going sideways, you're probably not saving tire. But hey, if you go fast enough, you don't need no stinking tires. You can run it on the rim. Yeah. That five, that, that six, seven, eight, or five, six, seven, eight complex is so fun if you can just, you just stay in the throttle most of the time through it. A few drags of the brake, catch the creek grass or grass creek or whatever it is. Um, you can get a lot of time through there, but yeah, it seemed like a, a it. The temperatures got a little warmer than they had been in the practices I was running, and I think the tires went off a little quicker than what I'd been used to. Yeah, I don't think you were the only one caught off guard by that. It seems like a lot of the drivers were struggling with tire wear and, and really more so than any other race this year. But again, uh, it was a good points night. You got out ahead of Chuck Labano and uh, you're, you guys are really closing in the points picture for the amateur class. I think we're going to be looking at a whale of a battle in these last two races. What's your approach going forward? Just try to keep putting in finishes, top 15 finishes or what I got to have to get anywhere near. Uh, Charles is out of drop weeks, so one bad one from him and I, it gives me a window but chuck i think is i think chuck's pretty much shut the door on us so it's hard to it's gonna be hard to catch him yeah hard but not insurmountable i think uh, again it's going to be quite a battle i think you guys are more than capable so looking forward to seeing how that battle plays out it's been really fun watching the amateur class all year and hopefully we're talking to you again next week all right sounds good all right well that is our uh that is our interview and that is a race here so again fuel mileage takes uh takes the cake here again but jack sanchez had had the car you're not making uncharacteristic mistakes and uh again that will slightly tighten up our championship pitcher heading into next week Yes, it will. I think, again, we're in for a really good show. And, Corey, you said there was no passing opportunities at Laguna Seca. I resent that. Uh, if you go full send through the corkscrew, you might catch a little bit of air. You might take all four tires off the ground, but you're going to pass some guys. Well, there's no passing <laughs> opportunities that are good. But if there's a racetrack, you can pass. I think some famous driver <laughs> said that in some capacity. But, again, we just want to bring up the... 
Uh, American Muscle Series, raising awareness for the American Society for Suicide Prevention. The AFSP saves lives and brings hope to those affected by suicide. They're a voluntary health organization that gives those affected by suicide a nationwide community empowered by research, education, and advocacy to get action against this leading cause of death. Together, we can stop suicide. AFSP.org. Again, to make sure you like and subscribe to the channel, all the fun stuff we got going on here. 12 enough subscribers going on our route to 1300. Just need your help to get us there. We will be live tomorrow night with the Spartan Sim Racing Truck Series League from the Richmond Raceway, so stay tuned for that. Thursday will be the Red Sox Racing League, and then we'll be back Saturday for some next-gen action here at the Motegi Raceway Oval with the Spartan Sim Racing League. But that's going to be Corey and Andre signing out of the booth. Have a great night, and we will catch you next time.